what you see today, this is, if you like, a mashup of different things. It, I'm, I'm trying to make it um, interesting, and, and it, it's antiques and objects of intrigue. Like um, over there on the corner, there's a, an Uzi, a suppressed Uzi, um, which is dated about 1980. This is a similar one that was used um, by the American Secret Service. And there's a very famous photo actually where Re Reagan's hurtled onto the ground and a guy pulled out one of the, the Uzi um, from a case, a Samsonite case, exactly the same as that. Um, which is quite interesting actually. So there's, there's that. I've, I've got um, quite a few deactivated weapons. Um, these are UK deactivated and they're the only ones to buy because you can buy DX from Europe, however, if there is a question, you've got to prove that they are deactivated and cannot be fired or discharged a, 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 a missile. Um, and the only safe way of doing that is to buy um, UK deactivation, which is Birmingham, London, Proof House. So um, that's those. I've got several war clocks here. Um, and all, all the, the items date from the late um, 1880s up until about the 1950s. Quite interested in um, Second World War and I've got quite a lot of, or interested in um, RAF memorabilia. Um, as you can see, uh, uniforms, also uh, pictures, um, and which was signed by famous pilots like Douglas Bader and Johnny Johnson, who always, always uh, command quite a lot of interest. Um, as well as film stars, so I've got so Michael Caine down there, um, uh, David Bowie sells obviously quite well because of um, his, his demise, which is very sad. Um, but yeah, in anything which is which is interesting, basically. If I'm not selling at Antique First, I'm, I'm looking, I'm interested in uh, going along to, to auctions and, and, and the good thing about these antique fairs as a seller is people come up to you and say oh my aunt's just passed away or I've just you know gone through my father's possessions um, which come you know bring up quite a lot of interesting things and a, a lot of the time too I'm trying to be honest and give them if they don't want to sell I give them valuations what I think they would possibly be worth in today's with my limited knowledge if you like but knowledge of what I sell what they'd be worth because a lot of the time when people said oh I've got this item and it's worth this much it may in a Miller's guide however when you actually come to a fair like this you possibly not get that that money for it so it, it's quite interesting the, the the actual money you you actually make uh, is, is different from what they say in the guide price um, but I, I do this more of a, it, it's an interest and a passion rather than, than a business. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> because I, I, I enjoy antiques and vintage items, I, there's not a particular thing that I think, wow, this is, this is if everything I think has got, anything with history, and, and the more provenance you've got on a piece, the better so if, as, as well as having like a metal bar if you've got a metal bar with a history um, and it's from someone famous is is, is absolutely fantastic and and that's what you you sort of strive for anything which is which is interesting which is with the hundred percent provenance through the prices at the moment here I've got some reproduction um, uh, vintage risque cards and they're at 50p each um, then I've got some signed photos, I've got here uh, Sir John Gilgood, that would be £10. Uh, there's Lauren Bacall there, that's a similar sort of price. Uh, there's a, that came from an RAF uh, collection and I think it's maybe a pilot or ground crew, uh, an original sketch to, to a loved one. Um, that would be ten pounds. So that's I think quite reasonable. Um, the little teddy bear there, he's he's dated I think around about 1930, 1935. Um, he's Woodwell. He's what you call a growler. You would would have originally pushed his stomach and you'd have got a noise out of him. However, that's long since gone. But he's still a lovely thing actually. And um, obviously someone once loved him. He's fifty pounds. Um, and then going on, we've got a selection of clocks ranging from 
unfortunately the, the other small ones are just sold but there's that one says 125 pounds quite nice that's um edwardian about 19 1910 um, we've got uh, two wall clocks they they um date from 1900 19 to 1930s and they're around about 200 pounds uh, they're in quite good working order uh, i think it's a nice pot there's uh, a couple of carriage clocks there they're about 100 pounds each this is quite interesting this is a 1930s french bistro clock um, it's it's electromechanical it's wound up um, it, it's actually a mechanical clock but it but it's windings to wind the spring you would actually plug it in so it winds up and, and then it runs mechanically with the platform in there that's that's 400 pounds because it's a double-sided one I don't even see from there but both sides are the same which is a lovely a lovely thing so they'd be on let's just say a calf clock or a station clock um, there's a selection of deactivate firearms ranging from uh, 450 up to 700 pounds um, and they're, they're all objects of interest uh, there's, uh, there's there's two uh, with suppressors on so they would have been used in a clandestine type uh, environment which is quite intriguing sort of in the Cold War maybe so that's, that's quite interesting uh, again they're UK deactivated uh, and um, yes just just other various things really it's um, just at the moment I, I do just the local fairs I've, I've got uh, my, my um, items in, in the shop but hopefully I'm I'm now over 50 and when I finish my um, full-time job I'd like actually to do this as, as, as a career if you like maybe a bit late in life but As a full-time occupation, uh, I've been doing it about two years now. Um, I was working for the MOD up until about 2012 and uh, I was made redundant and uh, I've always had a passion for antiques so I thought I'd do something about it and had the opportunity to do so and um, that's what I've done. I do like to specialise in small bits of silver, uh, Georgian silver and particularly Vesta cases which are old matchboxes basically but made of silver and base metal. Uh, the Victorians and Edwardians uh, made them in a variety of shapes and uh, different qualities and they're just very interesting things to collect. And there is a big collector base out there for all that and I do these items. They vary between £15 and the most expensive one on my stall at the moment is £1,275 which is uh, a hand enameled Samson Morden uh, Vesta case with depicting a hound's old front. So. Uh, we've been doing the Fair of Antiques Fair in Turnham Hall now for about seven or eight years. Uh, again, it's, it started with our interest in, in collecting, um, and it was one of the first antique fairs that we did. We tend to sell in Thurnham Hall uh, different items than we do at our unit in Warwick Lane. Um, silver is our main speciality. Silver and jewellery are the most popular items that we, we sell at the antique fairs um, and Fernham Hall well, is, you know, particularly uh, there, is a, there is a longer, a greater demand for it um, at that, that fair. 